What's up, guys? Welcome to LA AV Club. My name is Jared. I'm Aaron, and we're filmmakers living in LA, and we work on big projects, small projects, medium projects. Yeah, we work on a lot of live streams and live broadcasts with really big crews, really big sets, and we wanted to kind of find a way to make the scaled down, smaller version of that, and that's what this is. Yeah, and we wanted a place that we could connect with all of our friends and ask them questions to teach us what they do. Exactly. So we could learn from them yep. and take their jobs. That's exactly right. Yeah. I like it. So today on the show, we have uh, Jordan Pacheco. He's a director of photography and an editor, and I've known him for a very, very long time. We actually met back in high school, and we're in a band together. I don't know him quite as long, but I've worked with him a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, he loves Black Magics. He's a I know huge that. Black Magic yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. He actually just shot a short with Danny Trejo. I think they shot it on two Ursa Minis. Yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. Danny Trejo, right? Yeah, Trejo's Tacos sponsorship. We're trying to, we're trying to get yeah. it still. You he's know? one of uh, the recurring themes of this show. Exactly. He's almost in it as much as Sony Color Science jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check in with JP and nerd out on everything cinematography because you're a nerd. Oh, <laughs> Uh, hey, JP, what's up, man? Hey, dudes, how's it going? I'm happy I'm finally on the lab podcast. Your, your setup looks really good. This is like the best setup I think we've ever seen on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, now that now that I've been inspired by your guys' uh, studio shenanigans, maybe I set up one myself, or maybe not, who knows? <laughs> well, it looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, what are you uh, lighting it with? Oh, you know, sometimes you might just get a Quasar too. You know, maybe you'll get a get a Fresno or whatever the heck this one's the called. Forza sixty. That one. That one. Yeah. Too. Neither one of you. <laughs> <laughs> this might not just be my concoction. I don't know. Maybe just light. Maybe it's just my daylights. I don't know. Who, who knows? <laughs> oh look, he has cameras behind him. What are those? Ooh, yes, I have uh, some Black Magic Pocket Six Ks or Pocket Cinema cameras. Which are some of my favorite cameras because I'm a, I'm a Black Magic fanatic. Yeah, I have a couple Black Magics as well. Uh, but what is it you like about using them? So a couple of things. First off, I think that there is an element of sentimentality, uh, love at first sight. Uh, Black Magic, and it, that time it was like the real small pocket. That was the first camera I ever saw that gave like that I saw that had like a raw image before you colored it and graded it right and shot in raw and all that kind of stuff. And beforehand, all I had done is work with DSLR, so I, I didn't really. Like it opened up my mind. I was blown away by how flat an image was before grading. And so that was part of it. Functionality is a huge thing. It took a second, right? Because you could tell it was built by, by like editors first, because even though it was really functional to touch, it was a box that you couldn't hold on to. You had to buy a bunch no, of accessories they're, for it. They're, they're built by engineers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's well, like ergonomic. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. I, well, they had, they had that Da Vinci yeah. right before they put out the yeah, cameras. Yeah. That's why. That's why. Well, I mean, it was yeah. a, like that. I think that company started as like just a bunch, like you know, it's editors and engineers. Yeah. Like created a product that worked. They may have not <laughs> asked anyone on the original Black Magic who ever used a camera. So, like, their feel, thoughts. Honestly, field tested it. Yeah. Honestly, because I mean. Like, the first one was like so little, they were even small the 4K and, and the 6K. It's like, did you who, did you find anyone who works like on a set? Yeah, because first thing you would say is, yeah, this would be amazing if it had a battery. Yeah. And they'd say, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, we'd have to make it an inch bigger and weigh six more ounces. And yeah. every DP on earth would say, exactly, exactly. do that. Yeah. It's fine. It doesn't have to not fit in a pocket anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, I think that's kind of ironic that the new uh, pocket cinemas can't actually fit into a pocket. Yeah. You know, but they kept the name. But yeah. I, yeah, so I, I started shooting with them and then I fell in love with the Ursa, which I think they got a lot of things right with. The Ursa Mini Pro, I should say in particular, like that camera is a workhorse. It's a really, really affordable camera and you're getting I mean, fantastic dynamic range, great resolution, all the uh, raw. B raw. B raw is yeah, so B-Raw beautiful. Is awesome. yeah. B raw is like changing the entire game. That camera also, uh, I think that was one of the first ones that really recorded to an external drive. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. I and, think so. and even now, right? Because now it's like when everyone has their pocket cinemas yeah. rather than but CFast cards are still so expensive. Yeah. So you might as well just port it out via well, USB C. The funny thing I, it's like once you use it, you're like, oh, it's so rad to put together, uh, like to use an SSD. Like it yeah. makes everything so much quicker. It's way cheaper, blah, blah. blah. And then you're like, yeah. Why didn't you just design the camera to do that though? Yeah. <laughs> like you put a cord, uh -huh. but then you went, I don't know, you figure out how to like duct tape it on. Yeah. Honestly. Whereas same thing with the Ursa G2. Why not have just made a slot where you can slide it in or yeah. in the cage have a specific accessory already lined up the, instead the, of that's like all extra bongo yeah. ties yeah. and tape. Yeah. And, or like, like having it hang. So yeah. it's just hanging yeah, off. Yeah, it's just like, hanging off the, the side. Honestly, yeah. people don't talk about this enough, but 
more than like the size and ergonomical values of the camera, oftentimes the media which it records on is just as important. Oh yeah. And the fact of the matter is like, so with my with my Ursa Mini Pro, I bought a, a CC Tech uh, a SSD uh, adapter, right? So instead of using CFast cards, which are really small and really expensive, like I like to feel like I know where my media is. Yeah. And SSDs, and it's like a terabyte of that is is considerably cheaper than the price of like one. 300, 400 gigabyte SS, oh, yeah. SS, uh, CFast cards. CFast cards are, I think it's like, yeah, like 250 for a 128 or yeah, something. Yeah, something, something around there. Yeah. Like, it's funny because you'll fill that yeah. up pretty quick too. Like. Uh, remember when Sony did their cards? The Oh, the you mean those little the sticks? like the sticks? Those things were so expensive too. Yeah. They're like yeah. 64 gigs. Well, I'm just not into I'm just not into proprietary media, right? And so what you find out is like a red mini mag is just some like micro SSD. Yeah. It doesn't do anything special or whatever. So I'd, I'd rather just open that up anyway. So you can spend more money on yeah. your camera system into more important Here's the thing. things. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff with the red mags and I like totally get that maybe these things are more expensive than they should be but it works Wait, like but what yeah. like, like they like made better. a system that fully functions yes whereas sometimes remember when we shot on the black magic and uh oh, yeah, it didn't yeah. record we had a memory card in it Ooh, and an yeah. ssd and it it, it recorded it, no, it, 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 it filled said, the card yeah, it filled the card yeah, and then we, we went to dump it. We plugged it in. Luckily, Joseph, we were diting right yeah. there. Well, there was no, nothing like, on the card. There's yeah. no media, and we're like, wait. Oh, what? okay. It was probably the other. There was probably the card then, <laughs> not the SSD. Yeah, yeah. Plug in the card. No media. Oh dear. Like, it's just gone. Yeah. And so we had to like reshoot all that stuff real quick. We're like, okay, um, yeah. uh, why did that? So okay, it's like cl close, close to that. Go. Well, like, all the options of this SD card and a second slot and a SSD reader and a CF card and this is like yeah, those yeah. are all great. Or just give me one that works. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I will take I, one media that works it's, over nine options. It's <laughs> nice having options because obviously versatility is important, but yeah, you might only be able to record one way on red, but at least you know that one way is gonna work. If you have three, four different options, you have to be careful because some options are worth more than other options, oh. right? So if you have like all these different kinds of media stuff running out of your Ursa Mini or something like yeah. that, like, yeah, that's something you gotta, you gotta take into consideration. Well, and that's also one more piece. It's like an external cable maybe you forgot to bring with you or it's, uh, you know, there's all these things or how yeah. to mount it. Now it's Mongo ties. That is, it, I do have, so I, I love, I love the Ursa Mini. Um, I'm so happy that the G2 has fixed its fixed pattern noise, but if there's one critique I still just have, it's, it's making sure that our cabling doesn't feel as flimsy, right? Because there's no, there's no like bayonet locking attachment for USB C cords or or anything, right? There's that one. This is the yeah. biggest nerd conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's why I haven't, yeah. di I haven't diverted it yet yeah, because I'm just like, it's hilarious. I like this. No, I mean, so you're into camera. There is. I mean, it's important. You there know? is one With adapter that Aaron. There's one adapter that Aaron bought for a USB C into like an SSD drive. That does like pinch down and bayonet in yeah. like the actual cable. Oh, the Tilta one's pretty oh, good. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. it has yeah. a little but, like little oh, pin. Yeah, so Tilta sells a specific yeah, cable yeah. that screws into the cage and into their uh, monitor mount. Yeah, so right. at least it does, you you run that that's gone. But but the, the, either way, like USB C is like it's like HDMI. It's oh, here's a, one a pro awesome. tip. My first pro tip. Pro tip. If you have a pocket 4K or a uh, 6K and you yeah. want to run the SSD. And you don't have the tilt a cage, you can still buy the tilt a cable, pull the little screw out, and basically do like a twist tie, and it runs the same function. It'll lock, oh, it'll lock it in. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we, we've done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. I have one of my I have one of my uh, small rig cages with that. Yeah. And then I just run the cable like it is, and then you could get the tilt a thing and put it that's on. Right. That's, that's right. That's good tinkering. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's all <laughs> I do. <laughs> Literally, I do that more than I shoot. This well, you, guy, this, this dude, he'll be like, at like nine o'clock at night, he'll send me a picture of like a new rig he's built with like a new, he's like this new monitor system that I rigged off of this thing with this attachment and it can go into this camera and I'm and he's like drinking beer and just like finding, finding new ways to MacGyver. Honestly, like, <laughs> and then, but then he builds like a C-stand, one C-stand <laughs> studio. So it's like, you have to, yeah. we call it, we call it ghetto rigs. I know we've done some ghetto rigs, but the point is like, that's part of the fun, right? It's like, especially as a, it's shitty rigs. That's yeah, shitty rigs, right. Well, that's part of the fun. Do they the, own the trademark on that? You know? Probably. But speaking of the, the Ursa, actually, since we're on the Black yeah. Magic topic, topic, you shot a Western with Danny Trejo yeah. not too long ago. And where'd you guys shoot that? And what was it like working on, on a production that large with, you know, big names like that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I shot a, a short, a really, really high budgeted, really, really cool um, a project called Calico Queens. Danny Trejo started it, directed by Charles Jocelyn, produced A. Salvador, Everett Moss, Joss Plassey. 
and uh, we shot it at Paramount Ranch before it burnt down. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, but I, I adore westerns. Westerns are one of my favorite genres. I was blown away by good. The, I love spaghetti westerns. Good, the bad, and the ugly for a few dollars more. Once upon a time in the West. Uh, newer stuff. Uh, the old Magnificent Seven's cool, and the newer Magnificent Seven actually I really really liked. So uh, so shooting that. So you know it was a really huge like like proper like union scale kind of production. And it was a two camera setup with two Ursa Mini Pros and we tailored for all sorts of scenarios and a lot of, a lot of different setups. And we were running at full speed for like all the hours in the day that we could afford. And um, you know, that comes with its own set of challenges. So one thing with, with choosing the camera is I, I'd known that the Ursa Mini Pro was a workhorse and it was, you know, we had a certain amount of budget for camera, so I wanted to make sure our image quality was good, but we had more money to pump into lenses. We had more money to pump into additional camera gear, right? So shot on the Ursa Mini Pro, we use uh, uh, Zines, which are some of my favorite kind of glass and Canon glass. I think pairs really, really well with that sort of, with skin tones, especially for the Ursa. Yeah. And um, Zines are dope. It's oh, really they're just, and they're big and they're beautiful. And for yeah. me, I, I like, you know, a lot, a lot of people really, you obviously it's, it's per project. You have to talk about smaller cameras and smaller lenses sometimes, but when you're on a, a production like that, you really want things that, feel good because they're gonna be rugged. Yeah. And the Ursa Mini does have a really, really good fan system and we're kicking up dust from horses and from people oh, and yes, from gunshots yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we shot it out at Paramount Ranch and uh, Danny Trejo played one of the villains and it was just like from sun up to sun down, a ton of run and gunning. I could have recited the shot list and the, the vision that the director and I crafted backwards in Greek for you at the, at the time of it because of how busy it was. No, you couldn't. Not in Greek. Oh, yeah, you tried me. Well, you, I mean, you should have tried me a little bit ago. <laughs> um, but no, it was, it, was, it was a really, really solid production. And, and being a Western, of course, means that you're using a lot of natural light or bumped up naturalism, which is, is the kind of style that I like a lot of. Um, and you also have to understand that you're gonna be in the heat, you wanna kick up that dust, you want to you want to use your slow motion really wisely because things are just flying and things are looking interesting. So it was a really, really good production, a lot of smoke, uh, a lot of dust, a couple gunshots, like real uh, real guns with a real armor on set, that sort of thing. So it was, it was a really good experience. Do you think you can maybe get us a sponsorship from Trejo's Tacos? Because we've been pulling for that uh, for a little while. I, yeah. I was really surprised because if I was Danny Trejo, one of the things I would put in my acting contract is that you have to have this set catered by Trejo's Tacos. That's, yeah. Which well, I he, think, he actually brings them on with him to certain <laughs> sets. Oh, well, you yeah. tell me now because yeah. I tell you, he didn't bring them on with us. Yeah, it was probably way too big of a, a, a production or something. <laughs> but like, yeah, like I've done smaller shoots with yeah. him where yeah. he shows up with like a box of burritos. Oh, that's or, like, oh, a box of beautiful. Tacos. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would, I would take that. And, and uh, Danny Trejo, by the way, is for, it's funny because he's one of those actors who you feel like you've grown up seeing your entire life like in every production oh, yeah. or in yeah, commercials sure, and everything. Yeah. So to finally like meet him, he's a really, really nice guy. Oh, he's uh, awesome. He's nice, yeah. you know, and, he, and he's getting a little older, so it's kind of funny like watching him like hang out uh, between takes with like his Rough Rider gang of, of miscreants and stuff. I was like, this is pretty good. Like, he's a good guy. He later like pulled that dude out of that car accident and I was like, yeah, it seems like him. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he was on TV with that and that. Yeah. yeah. And he has no shirt, everything. <laughs> just pulled Danny. He just pulled Danny, Danny on the, the news yeah. being like, <laughs> machete kills yeah, yeah, yeah. 24 <laughs> steps. <laughs> dude in the car, I got him out. Yeah. Uh-huh, got him out, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing about the Black Magics is actually, it has a really good image and it uh, the color science it's like it's a little brown, but because yeah. it's raw, it's so good. Like it's it's the second. I mean, I guess you could say some people like Canons, yeah. but I would think my, in my eyes, oh, that's not true. Ari's is no, pretty good. Ari's, Ari's is Ari's, probably the standard. Ari's is the standard, but I gotta yeah. tell you, I mean, I've done so many tests and I've been fortunate to shoot with Ari and Black Magic at the same yeah. time. There's plenty of tests on YouTube now. Yeah, you're matching them. Look, yeah. the, the skin tones for Black Magic is wonderful. This is something that they got down really, really yeah, well. Yeah. And I think that's why, like, we're seeing in the indie world, especially. The because thing I don't like about Ari ones, or the Ari color, it's not the color science, but it's, uh, you're generally not recording raw. You're recording pro yeah, res. Yeah, pro so, res. You, so, like, well, it's, yeah. it's already there. It's just harder to push, I think. But again, it's like you really shouldn't need to push things that. Well, I'm not, to, uh, yeah, yeah, if you're trying to do color and stuff, like yeah. if you're trying to go night to, for day or something, you know, or something that's extreme. What you want. That's what yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, but they also have a huge dynamic range, yeah. but you just don't have as much flexibility not being in raw. Exactly, yeah. Whereas a red, you have the dynamic range and that, and you can match the red because you have 16 bits. Exactly. You know, but yeah. to, I heard kind of to Jared's point, one thing that's important is, yeah, it's like you shoot for the edit. So yeah. really what you're shooting is, there aren't a lot of projects that I like approaching where it's like, well, this is, unless it's obviously a very specific, heavily graded kind of piece, but in which case we've seen the RE do that too in ProRes, you know, yeah. 4 to 2. So I think the answer is, yeah, we, you gotta shoot for 
what the look is and just try to match it yeah. in here as much as possible. It's like, I'm a kind of guy, like I don't want to do a ton of grading in pose because like we didn't get the thing that we needed to get the day of. Like I'd rather take the time. And to your point, yeah, I think that the black magic, I really just go on skin tones, but yeah, it does skew a little, a little more sepia, which is kind of fun. I also think that's why it really worked for the Western actually, because yeah. obviously yeah. this is a late 1800s kind of piece and pulling the colors kind of out of that brown actually kind of creates a pretty nice aesthetic, you know? My friend Peter showed me a trick though that you can take, I forget exactly the process, but basically I'll try and find the link or something, but uh, it'll be in the description yeah, below. Yes, color, uh, the color science, you can basically shift so that your or in Da Vinci is now reading it as an Ari would, yeah. because it flattens out the black magic processing, so it's like basically flat, flat, and then it takes and it basically is reading it as Ari, yeah. and it just lifts the blue a little. It goes from tinting brown to tinting blue, yeah. and it's like it's even closer to matching an Ari without even really trying to even having to, yeah, yeah. just because the way it's running yeah. without well, even it's, having it's, to grade. Yeah. It's, really really cool. it's running B raw yeah. through an Ari like. So that's like that's like a yeah. so, that's yeah. a software in Da Vinci. No, it's in DaVinci, it's the way it reads it. You yeah. can tell it basically. There's, a, there's a, we'll Yeah, it I'll put it in it, but it's Got like, it. you basically, yeah. you're turning yeah. off reading it as black magic and turning on reading it as Ari. That's really There's a few really more cool. steps to it, Yeah, yeah. but it's uh, it's but pretty it cool. You, it gets you closer Yeah, as soon as you do goal. it, and you can drop an Ari LUT on, and mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, that's really, 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 really yeah. close. Anyway, it brings up an interesting point, because at this point, especially, you know, everyone, a lot of people have pocket 6Ks, and so I'm seeing that footage, and that's like ingrained yeah. a lot of times in my psyche of what makes a good shot. Oh, I know what camera they shot on, the Ari's been like the standard, so yeah. to speak, for a while. We know what, how good of an image quality red can get. Point being is there's all these kind of really cool tools that are out there, right? So it, it stands to reason for a production, like, yeah, you can spend more money and bring on an Ari, or you can bring on a red or something, but also you can, you know you can get a, a good, if not a, a extremely comparable, like you're not gonna be able to tell the difference, honestly, post color between a black magic and an Ari a lot of times. So you might as well just oh, take yeah. that and, and just like pump it more And like a Ursa G2, things. you save all that money and it's also, I mean, pretty much way more ergonomic than an Ari. Yeah. I mean, an Ari is just a box until you rig it out and yeah. then you have the small monitor. The G2s. And then you the G, have the G, your G2's eyepiece. Already, yeah. yeah. And the yeah. G2's yeah. already kind of all there. And yeah. the G2 eyepiece, or not a G2, but Blackmagic's uh, viewfinder or EVF or whatever, yeah, yeah. their yeah. eyepiece is amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it's one of the best ones. I mean, I guess there's maybe newer ones now, but... And you can also buy, like, third-party yeah. ones that are really good that yeah. you can mount in. And yeah, whatever, but, there, but there's this, like, kind of this was yeah, the standard. Yeah. There's I think a, a there's this built-in really nice. And that's the thing, too. It's like, it's like right out of the box, you already have yeah. a lot of working components to it so you can just take more of that production budget camera budget yeah and just now we can like we can actually get the kind of rigging that we want to get yeah. we can, or the lenses we more I, I think honestly yeah. it's like it's like i think well, we shot you know a music video and, and like we were going to use a red but then you suggested why not just use your g1 mm -hmm. but and that extra budget then got us a set of zines yeah it was like okay well i'd rather put Love i'd rather zines. put the budget into the into the better glass and because at the end, when this is all cut, colored, and everything else in post, you can't tell the difference between the red and the, and, and the G1 at that point. You know what I mean? But the extra, the better glass I gave can. us a clear image. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, I I'm going to send that. you a test that I put together, Aaron, because it's between uh, red. I think like a lot of red helium footage, it's between uh, Ursa Mini G2 and it's between the RE Mini. And the question is, it's post graded shots. And so I'll like line that up to anybody and say like, okay, what camera is what? Yeah. And I had Jared take the test, you know what put, I mean? Put so. the we'll, put, we'll put the test yeah. in the link below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, you can't tell that I, I failed the test. Yeah, well the, yeah. the thing too is though, but each one of those, because for me, the red is the best form factor. So I get everything so, I want in so it. So you're thinking and like yeah. Ergonomics, yeah. yeah, which is- So I get everything I want in it, where yeah. as much as I like Ari's color science, it's a heavier, bigger camera and a lot more money yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot harder to use. So as much as I've loved using it, it's like I way less go for that. You trade it for like than the, the red, and yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. I've had great results with DSLRs with the GH5. I've yeah, had great yeah, results yeah. with the Pocket 4K yeah. and the Pocket 6K. But ergonomically, I hate using them once I want to use them for more than 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then uh, then I'm back to like, well, why not just use the red with the big monitor that articulates that looks good already if it's not bright enough, ultra bright it, which those cameras don't already have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like all those things are built in and then I just don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what, you know what I love more is because already you can tell the shift. It's nice to talk about just camera ergonomics yeah. rather than being like, this is just an objectively worse image. Because I feel like for a lot of black oh, magic they're shooters, so honestly, yeah. like coming out like now, I think, I think black magic really kind of stepped into its own, you know. I'm not yeah. being sponsored by them or anything, but they want to send me another camera. That's totally fine. But genuinely, like you know, really, yeah, it looks great. They're they're affordable and they're and they're great. And so as a DP, it's like okay, well, I'm going to keep sticking to this. And obviously, you got another limitation. The yeah. Black Magic is it's not a low light camera. I mean, you can make it. You have to just put yeah. in. It's a cinema camera. You got to treat it like a proper cinema camera. Red, I think, is really really is better in the blacks, even though the G2 has 
Red's not that great with uh, low light either, though. I mean, the Monstro is a little better, but it's because mm -hmm. it's full frame and it's a newer. Yeah. And then the Gemini is better. The Gemini is better, I guess. But even then, I don't really try to use that in the high yeah. ISO you setting. Know, it might just be exposure of what you're seeing to you. Like yeah. a lot of music yeah. videos, right, are shot on reds. A lot, yeah. And and a lot of low light stuff, I noticed it being shot on red. So maybe it's also like, okay, well, but I they, know what red but, works. But that they way. light for that though. Like yeah. that's like, exactly you, it like though. To, like to your point, you said, like treat it like an, a proper cinema camera. You're yeah. like, like you know, hey, we can't shoot with a match. Like a match can't be. Our <laughs> it's not lights. the A7S. Yeah, it's not the A7. It's not a Sony. Yeah. Um, you know. Not that, not that really anything is a Sony, but you know. It took so long to bring up Sony. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, almost finished. I know. <laughs> Luckily, you got it in there. Yeah. It's, it's it wasn't even really a diss, though. Is there a it, was actually, it was actually a compliment. Yeah. Does LAAV have a vendetta against Sony that I should know about? Every single episode, we make fun of Sony for at least once. Okay. Yeah. And then so occasionally, we admit that we use them, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While we still use and own Sony Ooh, cameras. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, but like for like a red or like an airy or a black magic, you know, going in, hey, look, we're, like if we're in a really low light situation, we know we're gonna light for that low light situation yeah. because we know a single match light or single candlelight can't light the whole scene. We just know that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna look good. So we're gonna craft the scene around something like that. You know what I mean? And like, uh, where's the where's honestly where it's like it's like the fun of of cinematography is composition and crafting. And I think lighting, like I think lighting is one of those things that. You know, it's easy to talk about cameras a lot of times because they're very physical and they're very like there and you can like show people me like oh, I shot this on a red helium, I shot this on a G2 or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, okay, cool. But if you didn't light your scene or whatever, you could, you could have an Ari. If you have a garbage flat scene, it's going to look like garbage. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter. It just what you're, like, yeah. you know, what's the, I think it's the best scene or the best quote Aaron, Aaron told me. It was like, if you, if you know how to, if you don't know how to light, it doesn't matter what camera you use. If you know how to light, it doesn't matter what camera you use. It's, yeah, it's you'll like, make it look yeah, good. Yeah. You know. I mean, right now we're shooting in HD. Ooh. <laughs> I know, right? Don't tell nobody. And it's like, yeah, but we get these tiny yeah. little file sizes uh -huh. and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just one, one quick last question. Uh, what are you doing to stay busy during no, this No, fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> 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 well, uh, in that case, uh, yeah, uh, JP, thanks for uh, coming on the podcast. We appreciate it. And again, fantastic, beautiful setup you got going over there in Burbank. Well, hey, uh, you know, thanks for thanks for having me, guys. Uh, it's nice to have friends that have such a professional podcast. So thank uh, you. I can't wait to come back. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Why do you want it to be 30 minutes? It's, it's the camera nerd ship episode. All right, this is the camera nerd ship episode.